Hi everybody, I'm Amanda Melby and I play Ruth in Raising Buchanan. I'm one of the producers and I'm back here again on Facebook Live to talk about Raising Buchanan and acting and this time I am joined by Ted Raymond. Hi Ted. Hi. <laughs> okay, we're actually live on Facebook now, which we weren't before. I thought we were. Um, so we were just uh, just catching up briefly. So um, how are you? I'm, I'm doing fine. Like I say, hunkered down, playing golf a couple of times a week, and making oh. the trip to the store when I have to with my mask on. Yeah. Um, so what, um, are you a good golf player? Am I what? Are you a good golfer? Uh, not anymore. <laughs> I'm old. I used to be a good golfer at one time. Now, but the good thing about my age is when I play, I break my age every time. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I haven't played. I played um, in maybe January or February for the first time in 14 years. Really? It, yeah. Well, because I thought about it because I had kids. My oldest daughter's 14. And I hadn't played 18 holes since before I was pregnant with her. Wow. Yeah. So it's been, so I, when I played in, layoff. yeah, I played in January, February, and I was like, oh, I forgot how much I love this game. It's good. That I was sore. Fun. I was sore the next day. Yeah. Yeah. So do you play nine holes or 18 holes? What no, do you play? I play 18. I play with the, uh, I, I play with two groups. I play with the uh, Falcon Dunes men's club a couple of times a week. And then about once a month uh, with the uh, Southwest Valley men's club, travel around, play different places. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have to get up super early to do that? It's so hot. Sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Like five o'clock in the morning. Oof. <laughs> You're probably used to that though with, you know, your call times. Yeah. yeah. That's the one thing about working in the business that I haven't quite ever gotten used to is like showing, you know, waking up at three in the morning for a 5 a.m. call time or something. It's oh, like, yeah. oh, that does not suit me. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> but I think if you were going to play golf these days, that's about the time that you needed to, you need to get out there. Yeah. 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 So I just want to welcome everybody that's your, that's watching. If you're watching, feel free to like click the button to say that you're watching so that we know that you are. And um, you can also type any questions that you have into the comment. Um, so uh, into the comment section. So there we go. Joe Gruberman is watching us. Hi, Joe. Thank you. Um, and uh, feel free to type your questions into Ted. We're going to into the comment section to ask Ted. And uh, we're gonna talk about acting and the movie and um, and life. So, um, Ted, when did you know you wanted to be an actor? When did I decide to be an actor? Yeah. <laughs> I, I guess probably when uh, I was when I was on ROTC duty in Illinois back in uh, late uh, late sixties early 70s, I was doing community theater there. And uh, Mike Genovese, uh, he, uh, he and I did a couple of things there. And then he went, he went professional up in Chicago. And through him, I got to meet a few people up there and wound up getting my equity card first and followed up by SAG and after. So what was the sh what was the show that you got your equity card uh, with? Oh, Streamers. That was my first. That was one of two shows I did with uh, Bill Macy, W. H. Macy. Uh huh. Yeah, we did two uh, two shows at the Goodman. Did Streamers and we did uh, we did uh, Front Page. We had a bit. We had a uh, what do they call that? Uh, Everybody gets paid the same. So oh. and every character actor in Chicago is in it. Is in front page. We had a ball. Yeah. The, um, I think I have a picture of that. Let me pull that up. Oh, okay. Ted, front page poker. That must be it, huh? Let's uh, see. Oh, yeah. The poker game or the reporters. It? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's one. Uh, there's Jack. Jack Wallace is uh, sitting there to my left. Guy Burrill was leaning over the table 
And I'm not sure who that is, the other one, because he turned away. Yeah. But yeah, we, we were the reporters uh, uh, in front page. Whole bunch of character people from uh, Chicago. Uh-huh. Yeah. Now, um, you have a mustache in that picture, and you, you, I found this old um, headshot, too, right? And no you had a mustache in that one. <laughs> So um, have you always had, look at this one, look at this old headshot oh, of yours. Yeah, that, yeah that's, the, that's one I used to use. Uh, I used to use that out in LA and, and of course back there in Chicago too. Yeah. I, lo <laughs> I love um, that on the phone, it's got one of those shoulder rests. I haven't seen one of those things in a long time, you know, because you could just like, <laughs> do this yeah. with the phone and and then you didn't have to hold on to it with your hands right like a telemarketer <laughs> <laughs> it was like a hands-free right. hands-free system but you you had a mustache there you had a mustache in that other one you've got a beard here yeah have you, have you always had um facial hair <laughs> uh yeah as a matter of fact matter of fact i had i had a beard and we were doing uh we were doing stroh's commercial out in the desert and then we got rained out and we had to go back and do it again. But in the meantime, I had gone back to just a mustache. And when we were going back, I had to, I had to get hair. I had to carry hair because I had to look like I did before when we did the continuity on the thing. Oh, yeah. so did you like I, glue it on? Like spirit gum it on or something? Yeah, yeah, just glue oh. it on, take it off, had it in the bag. It was good <laughs> stuff. It was expensive <laughs> stuff back then. Yeah. Okay, that grosses me out. <laughs> <laughs> I worked with somebody one time who had to do the same thing, except he didn't bring hair with him. He had to like snip it from his hair, like oh, really? the back of his head, and then he tried to like glue it on. And I was like, oh, I, you're going to have to do that in the other room because <laughs> gluing little bits of hair on your face was <laughs> not something I was enjoying watching. So, um, Okay, so I had another picture. You sent me another picture. This is from, uh, gosh, I don't know when. Maybe you can tell me. But um, funny thing happened on the way to the forum. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was funny thing happened on that. Now, I didn't have any facial hair on that one. I wouldn't have known that was you, Ted. And let's yeah. see, but I, I, I mean, I, honestly. That was 1980. That's okay. when I, uh, way back in uh, the early, early 70s, at the uh, Western Illinois University. They ran what they called Summer Music Theater. And Jared Brown was directing uh, Forum, and he cast me as Pseudolus on the thing when I was still in the Arrow, uh, running the ROTC there. And then up in Chicago, 10 years later, 1970 we did it, 10 years later, they wanted to bring me back. So I was down there on a guest artist contract to do Pseudolus again. Now, let me tell you something. I'm not a singer, really, you know? And I used to, I used to have to have uh, Hero and uh, Billy, uh, they, when we did uh, Pretty Little Picture, they did most of the singing on that. <laughs> I did romping around. But on the three houses, I had bottles of chlorophyll, uh, not, uh, what are they, that stuff, not chlorophyll, uh, <laughs> what do they call it? The spray stuff for your throat. Oh, okay, chloroseptic. Chloroseptic, yes. <laughs> I had, I I had a spray chlorophyll. bottle of chloroseptic in back of every one of the houses, and every time I got to run around the house, I went <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it was, yeah, it was kind of brutal on my vocal cords. Uh, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was fun. Was that one of the only musicals you've done, or have you done other musicals? Oh, I've I've done a lot of musicals. Oh, <laughs> for done, not being a uh, singer. <laughs> oh God, I've done. Let's see. Uh, let me. I have you to look have at to my give resume. Me it goes back. It goes back into the seventies. I've done a whole bunch of musicals. Oh, okay. Yeah. You don't have to give me a number. That that's mean. I I wouldn't know how many I've done. So <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, my brain doesn't hold numbers. For somebody who isn't really a singer or anything, I sure I sure did a lot of musicals. 
Yeah. Well, you're, you're a great character actor. So I think if they've got parts that, you know, require great acting or great character acting, you're the guy. Yeah. You know? yeah. I managed to fake my way through it. <laughs> now you, you sent me one more picture and I didn't, I didn't, what was this one from this? It says Zalman. Oh, this is from the American Jewish uh, theater. In fact, I think it was their last production before they folded called oh. Dreyfus in Rehearsal. And I played Zalman. Now I had lots of facial hair in that one. Yes, you did. Yeah, that was, uh, that, uh, I'll tell you, uh, Ben Tyler directed it. Oh. Yeah, Ben directed that one, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was a oh, lot. Oh, so that fun. was here in town? Yeah. Right. Oh, 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 okay, so Arizona Jewish Theater. Yeah. Okay, yeah, um, Janet Arnold was the artistic director there. Yeah. Um, when was the last time, was that the last play you did? No, no, oh. I did, uh, hmm, I did Cuckoo's Nest. I've done Quilt Maker's Gift like three, three or four, three different times out here. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I did, uh, I did uh, Cuckoo's Nest. Ben directed that one too. He, he's uh he's an icon here in town yeah yeah, yeah that's it, that's good that you've been able to work with him yeah um so in addition to doing theater you have done some tv right yeah and um this one looks pretty recent this this uh picture i'm going to share here because this show is not very old right so this oh is yes yeah that was uh that was my gig uh, over in Better Call Saul over yeah. in Albuquerque with Bob uh, Odenkirk. Yeah. That, so was that just a couple of years ago or when was that? Yeah, that was, uh, I, it was either two, or th it was season three of uh, Better Call Saul. Okay. So that's either two or three years ago. I know I'm still getting residuals from it again. <laughs> Love <laughs> that. Residual. But uh, my my scene my scene was with Bob. Oh, that's and, so great! Uh, I was over there for two days, and uh, and I got to, you know one. We had a great time because it's when the Cubs it's when the Cubs were in the playoffs, not yet okay. the World Series, but in the playoffs. And every time that uh, Vince Gilligan uh, called a, uh, a you know cut. And he was going to do a new setup. Bob and I were at a, at a computer there watching the game. The Gil <laughs> Go Cubs. <laughs> so you'll we always both, remember both, when it was. Yeah, both out of Chicago. He he did a lot of work in Chicago. Bob did. Mm. He yeah, yeah. He did a lot of stuff there. It that was must... after basically after I'd left. Uh, but uh, yeah, he did a lot of stuff up there. That that's a fun show. That must have been a fun experience. It was, it was, yeah. uh, it, it, I'll tell you the facility over there is to kill for, it's too bad, too bad we can't get stuff back here in Arizona like they have over there because that facility there, they were shooting two or three shows there and uh, it's a great facility, really mm -hmm. nice. I mean, I lucked out on that. I had, uh, you know, I'm with Danny's agency and uh, I had, I've had, a number of the online, you know, submissions, uh, auditions. Okay. I had like uh, about three of them, I think, three or four for uh, Breaking Bad. Never got a, never, never got hired for that. But for this one, I didn't even audition for it really. I just got, they just called and said they want me for this. Well, I think it's the same team, right? So they probably remember your footage from um, the Breaking Bad auditions. Oh, yeah, right? uh, on the Breaking Bad, on the Breaking Bad, the uh, <laughs> the last one, the last one I had uh, auditioned for, uh, what's his name, the star? Uh, Brian Cranston. Yeah, Brian Cranston. He was the director on the thing, and so I did, I did the audition, and then he wanted me to do a uh, a callback thing, and his instructions were, take it down, throw it away. <laughs> 
So I tried to take it down and throw it away, but that's not my shtick, probably. <laughs> <laughs> you can take it down and throw it away. I think you can. Um, yeah, totally. You totally can. Um, I, that's a nice lesson for people, though, I think, because, you know, every audition that you do as an actor, you might not get that part that you're auditioning for. But if you do a good job, they're going to remember you. Yes, exactly. Right? That's what so, happened with the casting director over there. She remembered mm -hmm. me. And yeah. That. That, was that was fun. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, it was. So I'm going to yeah. go, I'm going to go back a little bit more in time. And um, I go way back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, there we we're, go. Now, we're kind of bouncing around now, but this is from, let's see. That's, if from, that's from the Truman Show. Uh -huh. And as you can see her hand on the window and stuff, that's Laura Linney. And that is okay. when Jim Carrey was in the car and, he, and he's trying to, he's just sitting there in the car watching the cars go back and forth and everything. Uh huh. Trying to get her in the car. That's when he takes her on the ride and tries to drive off the island. And I'm stand, I'm there at the window because I'm the one that called her attention to it. That he's just sitting in the car, and I've got that the uh, the little waste basket I've got. That's called the uh, trash can cam is in it. That's one of the oh. things supposedly in the show. That every time when we go out in the morning and I say. Good morning, Truman. He says, good morning, Spencer. I've got the trash can cam going, filming him, supposedly. So that I mean, little, the little black knob. The, uh, yeah, yeah, that little black knob is the camera then? Huh? Like this little black um, black thing here is supposed to be the camera? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah okay. Just, they did a thing called Inside the Truman Show where uh, Harry Shearer na narrated the thing. And that's an interesting story. Uh, but yeah, I had uh, I did a thing on that. There's a I I don't know where that is. I it's a, it was a TV thing called Inside the Truman Show, and they interviewed uh, uh, Laura and uh, Ryan Delat and uh, Noah Emmerich and myself. You know, people who would that was on a five week contract. Oh that. wow! Yeah. Yeah, that's that's why the residuals are still coming, and they're not this. I mean, they're down a couple of hundred, maybe three hundred dollars now. But the first couple of years, the residuals were outstanding. You I gotta mean, love that. That financed a lot of stuff back in, <laughs> for a couple of years, anyway. But it's, yeah, yeah. So um, that was a lot of that was. I only worked on five five weeks. I probably worked. 10 or 12 days is all. That's uh, still a lot. That's uh, a lot for. Um, well, I had, I had like, I, I had, I guess, a, probably about seven, seven or eight scenes. But in the final, in the final thing there, I probably only have like four, maybe five that uh, made the cut, you know. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you the first. The very first filming they did, this is at Seaside Village, and the very first filming they did was an all-night shoot in February. Oh. Now, February, February down there on the Emerald Coast is not warm. Trust me. Every time he yelled cut after a take, the crew was there, and they had parkers and everything, because all I had on was a pair of shorts and my little cap and a golf shirt, and I was freezing to death. <laughs> you know, we all were on that, and we couldn't, uh, the, the greatest part of the night, that was, that was the whole, you know, the big scene where all the people come walking together in the middle of the night. I'm right in the middle with the dog. Okay. That's, the, that's a big scene, and that was an all-night shoot. Uh, we started, the call time was like five o'clock in the afternoon, and it was like 5.30 in the morning when oh. Peter Weir up on, he was up on the balcony of a, a building there and he yelled, that's a wrap. And everybody goes, yay. I, yeah. You it know, was, uh, yeah, it was, I'm gonna that was to, a lot of fun doing that show. I bet. I'm going to have to rewatch it. I watched it when it first came out. And then um, I've seen, I think I've seen it twice. Hmm. Um, 
but I didn't know you then, so I'm gonna it have to, shows, I'm gonna have to it watch it again. Up, uh, it shows up every now and then. Mm. That, how I got the part, that's a really funny story if you got okay, time to us. hear that. I do, tell, tell okay. us. Okay. Down there, I lived in Fort Walton Beach, which is on the Emerald Coast there. And they said, okay, the Truman Show is gonna be filming down at Seaside Village. So they had, they were gonna have a big cattle call. And I, I at the time, I was running a, a, a golf, a golf uh, tour. Uh, I had people from like 15 states that would come in for the, uh, for the events that I ran. It was called the Emerald Coast Senior Scratch Series. Anyway, I wasn't gonna be able to make this cattle call thing because I had a, a tournament going on that I was running. So I just gave my uh, my resume and my comp, one on my composite that I had at the time. I gave it to uh, Christine Pincense, who was the she was the coordinator, you know, for filming and stuff for the area. And I said, just here, give that to whoever's there, you know. And I just it passed in. it off. And as a matter of fact, I was coming back from the golf tournament, and. There was a long line of people all the way along the beach waiting to get in, you know, just just for the cattle call for a quick poop 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 with the. Anyway, I got a call back to go down to uh, to uh, Destin to the hotel for a call back. I went to the call back, and there was no sides. There was no audition sides or anything. It was strictly impromptu. You know, the Truman. I didn't even know what the hell the Truman Show was. Nobody did. Yeah, of and course. Said, if you've been on the, you know, you've been on the Truman Show. Now it's over. Tell us about doing it. And I went, huh? <laughs> and I said, well, let's see. I was, uh, uh, I was a, uh, I said I was a desk sergeant in the police station, but Truman didn't get arrested. <laughs> and I, I mean, I just. I was going <laughs> going off the wall there, and I walked out, and I thought, "Well, that's that." <laughs> <laughs> well, then I get another call and said, "Okay, the director wants to meet you," and they said, "It's he's going to be here on Friday. Can you come on this Friday and meet meet me? Uh, this is the casting director. Meet me up at my room in the hotel, and Peter Weir will be there." And I said. No, I can't do it. I, I can't do it on Friday. I'm running a golf tournament in Mississippi, and I have to leave Thursday to go over there and set up the golf course. And he said, "Well, can you come by? Can you come by Thursday before you go?" And I said, "Yeah, I can do that." <laughs> so I show up down at the hotel and I go in, and I'm oh, okay. It's almost time. So I head for the elevator, and this funny little guy with a funny hat. He walks down there, and we get into the elevating you know nod to each other and you, you go up and get off at the second floor and i start walking down to the uh casting director's door and he's walking right along and we stop at the door and i look at him and i say you must be peter weir <laughs> <laughs> so we go inside and he has me read a couple of a, a couple of sides from a part that's already been cast out in l.a he said i don't have the stuff yet for that he said, yeah, we're moving it a little while. I said, okay, that's fine. He says, now you're not running a golf tournament when we're filming. I, I said, I can work that out. <laughs> so so we, uh, I left and I thought, eh, you know, maybe, maybe not. And then the next thing I know, I get a call to go down to Seaside for another call back. Well, I pull into the parking lot and on the, on the porch of the uh, the pr production building there, there's Peter there smoking his cigarette, and he goes, "Hi, Ted." And I thought that's a pretty good sign, you know. Uh -huh. So I get in there, and I'm the only one in there with that finally gets a, a you know a sign, mm -hmm. very short, just "Good morning, Truman," you know, type of thing, <laughs> and. Uh, I'm the only one there with a side for that. So we go inside. I go inside with Peter and he says, hey, good to see you. He says, you got the pot. I just wanted to see you again. 
and we oh. fooled around for a little bit, you know, with a couple of garbage cans and stuff. And uh, so I went back and I went, wow. Yeah. I, I, I still didn't know how long I was going to be filming. I had no idea it was going to turn into a five week gig. Yeah, that's a, I mean, but that's, it did, and I, for a best, feature, that's, that's great. the best thing that I've ever had mm -hmm. or ever will have. Mm -hmm. Let's put it like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, that's. I mean, that's so cool. I'm gonna. I'm gonna watch it again and and make sure that I see it in there. It's it's fun for me now to watch back old movies. Now you know I've been working for a long time, not as long as you, but it's fun to watch older movies now and go, oh wait a minute, I know that person. Oh wait a minute, I know that person. Yeah. I didn't know that yeah. they were in this movie, or I didn't know them at the time that I had watched the movie. So, yeah. um, so you you in breaking you can in you play um, this guy that comes, he's like a donut shop regular, which is where my character Ruth uh, works at a donut shop. And um, you, you come in for two scenes. So there's one scene at the beginning of the movie and one scene at the end of the movie. Right. And I don't have a great picture of you at the beginning of the movie. Oh, um, that's, that's the later one. That's, yeah. that's where I uh, tell Terrence, I said, he's got, I see the handcuffs in his hand. And he says, go ahead. And I say, no, you look like you're busy. You go ahead. <laughs> yeah, you. Oh, I think you only have two lines, right, or three lines. It's not like you had a ton of lines, but they're all funny. Oh they're, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're all funny. The very first scene, um, you know, you're listening. Oh to yeah, that's that's when and, you we, you had. Yeah. Good luck with that. <laughs> yeah. So we won't spoil it because if you haven't seen the movie, I don't want to ruin the joke for you. So you'll have to watch it. But but Ted's got a couple of zingers. So this is um. This is Ted and Terrence Bernie Hines and Steve Briscoe and I at, uh, at the donut shop. And this is towards the end of the movie, um, but he's also in the beginning too. So, you know, we, we were fortunate that we had a lot of actors that came in for that part. I mean, I, I was surprised at how many actors actually fit that physical description. Um, and so we were, we had an embarrassment of talent audition for that part. Um, and, and you just killed it. You just knocked it out of the park. You know, it was just, you just were very deadpan and straightforward, which is exactly what Bruce was looking for. You know, not playing up the yuck, yuck comedy bit of it, you know? Yeah. So that was really great. And I think that's part of the reason why you, why you got the part. In addition to looking at, you know, typecasting, typecasting, yeah. old man, get yeah. the old man, there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so I um, tell you, it was a lot of fun working on that, though. Very, very professional. I mean, Bruce, everybody on the crew, it was really, really good. Yeah, it was. Thank uh, you. Yeah, you it know, it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure that you know the couple of days I worked, and I can imagine based on that that it must have been really comfortable and a lot of fun for you mm -hmm. and the people that had longer you know longer stretches in the film because it was really i mean it's a i think it's a very good funny film well thank you ted <laughs> you know when we had when we had the uh premiere and everything mm -hmm. yeah that was uh it was great to really see the whole thing it was good the only thing that i regret on the whole thing was i didn't get to see Emmett Walsh. Now, years ago, when I was out in LA, there was a group of uh, actors on Monday. We used to play golf on different places up in the valley. And uh, Emmett was a great golfer. And a real story about him, he and a roommate of mine, who was a roommate of mine in Chicago and also lived with me in LA for a while, Mike O'Dwyer. Uh, who was an alcoholic and anyway, <laughs> but I, there was my, there was, uh, w you know, William Devane. Mm -hmm. Okay. His first name is actually Michael, Michael William Devane. And Emmett is Michael Emmett Walsh. Yep. Well, <laughs> Michael Dwyer, the, there was something to do with the names of the other ones. So they had to go by, William Devane and M. Emmett Walsh. Uh, and O'Dwyer got to be Michael O'Dwyer. Yeah. But uh, anyway, yeah, anyway, we played golf out there. Emmett was a, Emmett was a very good golfer. 
Hmm. Very good golfer. And we had, we had a bunch of people out there. Remember, you talk about old time, Kevin Hagen from uh, Little House on the Prairie, the doctor, uh, John Agar, remember, from all the odors back in the, in the, in the cavalry pictures with John Wayne and stuff like that. It was just a bunch of older actors and stuff, and we all played golf together. And uh, it was it was really great playing with Emmett. And Emmett 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 in real life, you've seen his movies, mm -hmm. yeah, okay? And you know he plays a sardonic, sardonic sort of character. Yep. That's typecasting too, because that's the way Emmett is. <laughs> Emmett, Emmett can be, Emmett can lay it on like that. He, he, he was, he's a lot, he's a lot of fun, really. Yeah, he was pretty animated when he came and visited us, yeah. you know, he came a day early and passed out $2 bills and pennies to people and, um, you yeah. know, came and visited the set before we, before he was even called and, um, you know, he had all of that dialogue to do. He shot all of that in one day. Yeah. So he had a really heavy load. Oh yeah, well he he's, yeah. he's a talented dude, man. Absolutely, I mean, he really is good. Absolutely, yeah. I love all his stuff. I yeah. when I was down in uh, Fort Walton Beach and and had the uh, golf tour and everything, I thought, you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to run an Emmett Walsh Film Festival here and yeah. and golf tournament because I mean he's got quite a move there, you know. Why uh, don't you all do the that? stuff that he's done? Yeah. Yeah. There's still time for that. You got time for that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Both of us are getting a little long in the tooth, I think. All right. Know? Why not? I don't know how old Emmett is. I think he's probably maybe four or five years younger than I am. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. I'm not sure either. I probably could look it up, but I don't know. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Uh, Kathy Raymond, that must be your daughter or daughter-in-law. That's my Kathy. Kathy. Yeah, Kathy. She's Kathy Osborne, and today is her 44th wedding anniversary. Oh, happy anniversary. Rick. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Well, she's watching now, and she says, hi, Dad. <laughs> and she said, the amazing quadru uh, quadragenarian. Oh, that was, that was the first time, that was the first time I did uh, forum when oh. I was still running the ROTC there. And... Uh, they did a they did a uh, the critic from uh, Peoria. <laughs> it plays in Peoria. Yeah. The critic for the Peoria newspaper called me an amazing quadragenarian. Oh well, there I was only go. in my forties then. <laughs> that was in that was in nineteen seventy, I think. Oh goodness. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then Joe Gruberman says Emmett cusses like a sailor, and then Kathy says so does Ted. So, <laughs> oh, you know, you got to have your family as a fandom. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so I just want to remind everybody if they haven't uh, touched, uh, if they haven't caught the movie yet, um, it's available to watch. You can buy a DVD or a Blu-ray um, online and ship it to you, or you can rent it on a lot of the cable and satellite uh, providers. It's on a lot of them. And um, you can rent or purchase that on a ton of different platforms, probably 12 different platforms, including iTunes and Amazon Prime Video and Google Play and that sort of thing. So, um, oh, there's somebody else that was on too, Katie Ray Raymond. Is that your other daughter? Who? Katie. Oh, Katie, that's my granddaughter. Oh, your granddaughter. Yeah, oh, that's yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you, uh, family, for watching and for yeah. everyone else that's watching. and. If you're watching this not on the live version, but down the road sometime uh, later, thank you for tuning in to that. And um, watch the movie. Yeah, okay. don't forget to buy the movie. Yes, it helps. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, and one other thing, actually, um, if you've already watched it, go back and rate it for us if you liked it. <laughs> go back there and give go. us some good reviews and some ratings that really helps with the algorithms and all of that good stuff so if you've already watched it and you don't feel like watching it again just at least go back and and give us some nice little words of um, yeah they, and, and it's one they they uh amanda and bruce were a lot of uh, film festivals and 
got a lot of awards at the film yeah. festival all over the country. Yeah, we, we were fortunate to have a really good film festival run. So we were we really uh, were excited about being able to screen it in so many different places all over all over the country, which was awesome. So so um, we are thrilled that you were able to be a part of the movie. You're just such a, a delightful surprise in the movie. And I think people just laugh out loud every time your scenes come up. So you have the honor of always getting a chuckle, at least, if not a belly laugh from most of the people in the audience. So that's good. That's a way to, that's a way to go down in history, you know? Uh, um, so thank you for joining me today on Facebook Live, too. It was really fun to, to chat with you, Ted. Hey, well, great. Great talking to you, always. And, and on a personal note, just, you know, thank you for always being such a supporter of the union. I know that um, you and yeah. I were on, I, I think we were on the board at the same time. I was on the board, yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I can't remember if we were on the same board at the same time or different times now. I, yeah, I'm, I'm still on the uh, equity, uh, uh, what do they call it, the committee there. The local committee. Oh but. yeah, the liaison committee. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just I I appreciate your work. I know that you're a, a big union purport, um, supporter, and I and I always appreciate that you are the voice for so many of us. So thank you for doing that work too. Thank you. All right. Have a good afternoon, and thank you everybody for tuning in. Yeah. Thanks. And we'll see you next weekend.